Heads, we do the 12.5 versus 13.9. Tails, I tell you guys about a gun that hasn't been released from Triarch yet, and it's super secret. Heads. Fun fact, if I ever make a bet with you, and I pull out this quarter and you see me in person, it's a double-headed quarter, so never take heads. Um, or never take tails. Whatever. Either way, don't gamble with me. I cheat. If you're not cheating, you're not trying, right? A lot of you have been asking for the 12.5 versus 13.9 comparison, so we're gonna get after that today. Really quick before we get in, I uh, just wanna kinda outline the specs of each. So uh, Sam let me borrow his 13.9, which used to be my old 13.9, which I did the review on, you can see that here. And then I ran the, also ran the 12.5 that I did a kind of brief overview of, you can see that here. Uh, so they're not at apples to apples comparisons. The 13.9 has a dead air break, the 12.5 has a dead air flash hider. The 13.9 is running a A5 Voltor system, the 12.5 is not, it's got a law attachable folder on it with just your uh, standard buffer weight and buffer spring. Uh, he's also running EOTech. I was running Aimpoint on this gun. So they're not apples to apples. It's not exactly the same. There is a little bit of difference there, but there was enough similarity and I've had enough time on both guns now that I felt like I could give an adequate comparison. So I just kind of want to get that as, as a disclaimer. The main thing that everybody wants to know about is felt recoil. Is there a difference in how the gun operates and how it feels when you shoot it? I would say no. The biggest difference that I felt between shooting the two rifles had to do more with the muzzle device and less with the rifle itself. So with the 13.9, it's got that dead air break on there and I forgot how flat and how soft it shoots with that on there. Then when I took the first shot, I was waiting for the gun to come back on target, but then I realized it never moved. So then I was able to pick up the rate of fire as we went on. With the 12.5, it did move a little bit, but very, very little. Um, it's still a very soft, very flat shooting gun. And when I've shot 13.9s with like a war comp or a dead air flash hider, it's, it's the same, it feels the same to me. Uh, there's a very, very small difference there. It's, and you have to really be looking for it, but I don't think the average shooter is gonna be able to tell between the 13.9 versus the 12.5. I will say that if you're looking at getting the Voltor system, that will make a little bit of a difference. I think you're gonna see a greater impact on the mid-length gas system, as opposed to running it on something like a pistol. Uh, but that's, again, personal preference. But overall, both guns shoot very flat, very smooth. Um, I notice, like when I shoot the 12.5, I can see the dot, it'll go up and to the right and it comes right back. And it just, it's this very consistent, very smooth, uh, and just, it feels nice. And I'm sure that if you were to put a break on there, it would shoot just like Sam's 13.9 does, but I feel like a break on this 12.5 would be really obnoxious. It's already obnoxious on, on Sam's 13.9, and anytime he shoots it without a can on there around anybody, everyone's just like super, super annoyed and ready for him to be done. But uh, both guns shoot very flat, very fun to shoot. Uh, one thing that I know people brought up is like, well, is a mid-link 12.5 reliable? That was one of the issues that was brought up. And I have yet to have a malfunction with this. I've had no issues with the gun cycling, no issues with the gun feeding, um, no, no even mag-related issues of, of it loading the next round or anything like that. So uh, Triarch has got it figured out with the gas system on this one, and it is super reliable. The only thing I have yet to test on this specific gun is how it runs with a can on it. However, I will say that I've shot other 12.5s from Triarch that did have cans on them and they run perfectly fine. There was no issues. Uh, ran the OSS as well as the Dead Air Sandman K and there was no issues from either one of those. But that's not a big enough sample group to say, yes, all cans work on it. But from their testing, their individual testing, they've had no issues. I haven't seen any. So for those who say, well, the 12.5 mid is not reliable, I think you're gonna find equal reliability from both the 13.9, 12.5, no issues either way. Um, so moving on to maneuverability. So it is, it's a slight difference in length. Yes, the 13.9, you're looking at about an inch and a half, just under an inch and a half longer. If you need the smallest package possible with a mid-length gas system, go with the 12.5. Um, if you like that extra length, you know, being able to have a longer gun, some guys like a longer gun, if you, if you like that, go with the 13.9. But it wasn't, there wasn't a, working in and out of barrels or barricades, there wasn't a difference in maneuverability for me. I will say the, the one place where the 13.9, where that added length seemed to benefit was shooting on the move. So as we were moving from vehicle to vehicle or barricade to barricade on the move, it didn't quite bounce as much at the front. It felt a little bit more steady. But again, those are trade-offs. You know, looking at a shorter gun versus a longer gun. So with the shorter gun, more maneuverable in a tight space. The longer gun, probably gonna be a little more steady as you're shooting on the move. So it just depends on your preference. As far as accuracy goes, 
there wasn't a difference for me. They're both running the Track 2.0 which are sub MOA barrels with match grade ammo and depending on the shooter and the conditions you're shooting in, uh, but both capable of sub MOA. Didn't notice a difference in the two of one being more accurate or, over the other. Um, weight, as far as weight goes, yes, the shorter gun is obviously lighter than the longer gun, but I would say it's a negligible difference because you're not, it's not like you're looking at a two or three inch difference. You're not looking at like a 16 inch versus a, a 10 five. Same barrel profile, um, and, you know, there's too many other factors that are going to weigh down your gun as far as like optics, if you're running lasers, lights, all those other things. So the, the difference in weight to me is negligible. They're both fairly lightweight guns. They're not the lightest guns on the market, but they weren't intended to be light. They were intend to be, intended to be durable and reliable for professional end users. That's what Triarch's mission statement is. So if you're looking for the lightest gun possible, this is not it. But if you're looking for a, a super tough, durable gun that's going to run and be accurate, this is it. And when it comes to velocity, you're only losing about 80 feet per second between the 12.5 and 13.9. And that's with 75 grain, hollow point boat tail, um, match grade ammo. And that was some data that was collected independently by SlyTech Training. So Brian, please check out SlyTech Training. Uh, he works with uh, as an adjunct instructor for Centrifuge. He also runs SlyTech. Go check him out. I'll link him down below. Uh, does a lot of testing and, and captures data for Triarch independently. So awesome dude. But anyways, so I think the overall package of the 12.5 versus the 13.9, you're getting a better velocity to length ratio with the 12.5 than you are with the 13.9. So that leads us into which would you pick? Which one, is there one that's better over the other? And it's really hard to say, and I know that's not the answer that people want, but it really depends on you specifically. So for example, if you're in California, I would say get the 13.9 all day because getting a pistol in California, I think, I don't think you can do that. And if you can, it's a headache, right? So 13.9 would be much easier for you. If you're LE and your department has an IOP program, an individual officer's purchase program, but you have to run like a 16 inch, you can get the pin and weld at 13.9 to meet that 16 inch so that you can run the shortest length possible on duty, but still have that velocity, still have the accuracy, the lightweight, all that you need there. On the other hand, if that's not you and you don't need those things, then I think 12.5 is a better package. Uh, but the, uh, the downside is you're giving up that ability to run a buttstock and you're not having to run a brace. But you also get the option to change muzzle devices at your leisure. So if you're you know on the market for a can and you want to run one muzzle device for now and switch to something else when your can gets out of jail, you have that option with the 12.5, which you don't get with the 13.9. So these are the things you got to consider when you are looking at uh, one or the, over the other. I obviously chose the 12.5. I had the 13.9. Sam now has it. Um, if I, if I had to, if I could only have one gun, if I had one gun and you got only one length for that one gun, I would do the 12.5. I like the smaller package. I like the velocity you get out of it. You can still reach out to, to some distance with it. Um, your velocity coming out of this gun with that match grade ammo, that 75 grain is right around 2,600, 26, 26, 26, 26 is what it was with that 75 grain hollow point boat tail. So still pretty good velocity coming out of it. Um, the 13.9, you were looking at like 27.12 is the velocity you were getting out of that. But either way, good all around links and options for both guns. But it really depends on the mission set or what you're trying to achieve, what you're wanting to do. If you want that butt stock, you need that 16 inch length, go 13.9, amazing, amazing gun. Uh, if you don't need that and you're cool with the pistol brace, go with 12.5. So. There you have it, hope that helps. Um, I do wanna answer a couple questions that I got uh, down in my last video talking about this. So uh, two questions I got. One was, what light mount am I using? Now I'm using, I'm just using the uh, Surefire RM33, whatever. It's just their pick mount is all it is. It's their Picatinny mount for the light. That's all I'm using. And it's just one screw to take the light off if I wanted to pop it off. I will say though that now that the Surefire Pro is out, if I had to do it again, I would get the Pro. The Pro is a better mount. It comes with the M-Lock and the Picatinny mount, so you can swap it if you wanted to run it off the, the uh, M-Lock slots or if you wanted to run it off the pick rail. It's up to you, but I think that's a better mount. It puts it tighter to the gun than this does. Everything else is pretty much the same. So again, if I do it over again, go for the Surefire Pro. And then the other question that I got was, I mentioned that I put it in a bag. And I didn't show that, and that's my bad. Uh, so there's two bags I put it in. One is my range bag, which is just the uh, the first spear one I did the review over, and then uh, the other one is just a backpack. And now, 
before anybody gets all upset about you're not supposed to carry this in a backpack, that's fine. I'm not carrying it around. This is for transportation purposes. If you just need to move the rifle from one place to another and you need to transport it without using a gun case, this is another option to do it. So it's just a uh, North Face, what? North Face, uh, Ruder? Ruder? North Face? It's just a uh, generic North Face backpack. So, Boom, there you go. You can see it's closed up on top, 12.5 in a backpack. So it'll fit in a generic backpack. You can carry it around that way. It's up to you. Hope that helps. Hope that answers some of the questions you guys are having. Make sure you check out Triarch Systems. And if you're looking to buy a barrel, upper, receiver, whatever from them, use uh, Goon Life, saves you 5% off your entire purchase. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. If you haven't already, karate chop that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. So there's two things I wanna ask you guys. One, leave in the comments down below if there's other stuff you wanna see me review. It can be accessories, it can be other guns. It doesn't have to be a Triarch gun. If there's a Triarch gun or something you wanna know, leave it down below. And the other thing is, would you guys be interested in seeing photography stuff on this channel? I get a lot of DMs about what camera I use, how I take certain photos, all that stuff. So if that's something you guys are interested in, if there's enough people here who wanna see it, I'll do it. If not, I'll just keep answering DMs. But um, just wanna help you guys out. So I know you guys wanna take dope photos of your guns. If that's something you're interested in, let me know. Comments down below, helps me out. See you guys later. I got sweet tea today. I'm gonna cut back on the topo. That's making me burp too much in videos. And I had to lay off the whiskey. Slowing down my mild times. First world props. Anyways, I hope you guys are being safe out there with everything going on. Uh, I know it's been wild, so you know I love all y'all. Going to the, the super secret data sheet. Nine. My son is running naked through the hallway, yelling and screaming. <laughs>